And with that, former Deputy Prime Minister, former Foreign Minister, um, uh, Winston Peters, and I'm um, to talk about um, the Kim.com affair in relation to John Key and the recent revelations um, about the GCSB and the implications of this going forward. Um, yesterday in the House, Winston, you delivered a very impassioned speech, um, pointing out that this, this issue is not going away. Um, could you perhaps um, start by telling us where you see the situations currently? If this was the United States, uh, the UK, uh, most of Europe, um, Australia or Canada, then we'll be facing a serious constitutional crisis because in the, those countries, if a uh, minister or prime minister is caught clearly not telling the truth, not on one occasion but over and over again, and using defences like, I can't remember, perhaps, maybe, uh, I have no recollection, there is no record, uh, then that person would have been gone or impeached or the subject of some serious discipline a long time ago. And I suspect in New Zealand we've been so numbed down over the repetitive behaviour like this that we're accepting it. I think, um, I mean, I wonder whether it's also to do with the fact that we haven't really had a Prime Minister in this position in so, so, so blatantly in, in, in previous, previous times. We've had, I mean, we have to go back to Maldon before we have, have any history of um, of the security agencies being misused in, or, or allegations of the security agencies being involved in, in illegal activities? Well, yes, but there's a converse here. Back in the day of uh, Robert Muldoon, the allegation was that he had too much involvement and too much oversight, in fact, too much interference mm. with those agencies. In this case, the modus operandi to get himself, himself out of his responsibility is to say he's taking no responsibility for the uh, portfolio of, that he's in charge of. Mm. But that can't be because uh, internationally it is understood that this level of um, uh, intrusion of people's privacy or people's rights brings with it enormous uh, cautions on not infringing uh, beyond the legal the parameters that are laid down in the law. We've got no idea what's going on now other than I am utterly certain that the Prime Minister knows far more than he's letting on. But it's not possible for someone to be that unaware of what's going on under him. So, I mean, I think that that's the perspective of a lot of, um, a lot of insiders. And I mean, we've, we've now got um, yourself and, and David Shearer openly calling the Prime Minister a liar, which in, a, in and of itself is, is, is a pretty serious issue. Um, do we... Why, why do we? Why do you believe that he is lying about this? Why do you believe it's impossible for him not to have known? Well, in the space of a short time, uh, he, I can prove that he made three statements which are demonstrably false, and the other one was just the other day. He was asked in writing a written question. Uh, this was, there was a meeting at the, the certain time. Uh, what was the subject of it? His answer. There is no record and I have no recollection. This is the meeting on the 30th of June. Of June with, um, now that puts him way beyond his current level or, or earlier state of knowledge. Yeah. Don't forget it was the 70th of September this year. Mm. Then it was booted all the way back to January this year. Now we're in back into June of 2011. Uh, and my belief is that he knew much earlier than that as well. Now, my point is, you cannot give two totally conflicted answers and be saying that you're telling the truth. He, he seems to be trying to convince us that he, he didn't really know and he's still, he's still sticking to his story really that, that whilst he, he um, it might have been mentioned in this meeting in February, um, he can't recall it um, and it's of no great consequence. Um, how so I think in this particular circumstances we have what one possible explanation might be that he, he, he asked not to be told, but he hasn't told us that. He hasn't said, well, I, I, um, I deliberately um, wanted to recuse myself from this matter and, and gave instructions to ministers and officials not to tell me. 
Well, even to get to that as a logical explanation, you still have to be asking not to be told about a specific thing. And you could not know that specific thing that you're not to be told about unless you mentioned it. Unless you knew about it. To That's right. It to some extent. And that, that means knowledge. But, you know, uh, here we are dancing around the pen here trying to explain the Prime Minister, but this is, to, this is not democracy, it is not transparent, it is not accountable, and on those grounds alone he's hung out to dry. So, so last week he said that he wanted the public to judge him. He said that um, he was being accused of lying by Shearer, but, he, but as far as he was concerned and by various other people, he, he thought that, that, that it was up to the public or the people of New Zealand to judge him. Um, I've heard that before. So I heard somebody say, your president is not a crook. Looking down the barrel of TV, saying that your president is not a crook. I am not a crook, I think it was, was, was Richard Nixon, wasn't it? So, so I mean, with, with this, this and, and John Key's making jokes about this being like Watergate, but I mean, in some respects, there are some similarities with, with Watergate. We have legality involving um, um, security agencies. Um, well, it's very strict. It's beginning to be on all fours of like, Watergate, because it became, you remember, the comedic answer to Watergate was, what didn't the president, president know, and when he didn't know it, well, was the byline. This is what did not, uh, the, what did John Key not know, and when did John Key not know it? And what we do now know is that whatever he knew, he knew a downside earlier than he admitted. So, one of the, so, so let's just assume for, for argument's sake that we have a matter which needs to be inquired into, and I think that it's pretty clear that, that not only does the Prime Minister need to answer questions about this, but so does Simon Power and Chris Finlayson and the Solicitor General, who's now, who's, and the Solicitor General is now High Court Judge, David Collins. Mm -hmm. um, well, I might add, the Attorney General, who after all was giving a speech about extradition matters you know, in Australia, and the connectedness to the timeline is far too close for that to be pure serendipity. In the, in the context of this institution, that sort of inquiry is unprecedented that I know of. I don't think that we've ever had, a, had, a, had an inquiry which, which brings ministers, um, a bunch of officials, and allegations of illegality into, 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 um, into discussion. Um, is this something that the Privileges Committee can consider? Well, certainly the Privileges Committee can consider issues of a contempt of Parliament based on the failure to tell the truth, yeah. and knowingly so. Well, it, it even can consider failure to tell the truth, but that can be excusable if the person thought they were telling the truth, but was not, but that's a defence before the Privileges Committee. Uh, in the wider context, there would be a difficulty on the Privileges Committee investigation where the SIS or the GCSP was concerned. Because they wouldn't be able to give evidence to the to well, Privileges Well, actually, the Parliament asserted, asserted its power they could. Yeah. And even if it's in, in secrecy, in the conference, we're all sorts of all secrecy, Parliament could assert its power and that would happen. Except, as you and I know, there's no way the National Party is going to allow that to happen. Right. What about, I mean, is there some other way of, of, of dealing with this? Is there some other sort of special inquiry that protects? could be set up to, to inquire into this? Well, you know, um, let's be honest, uh, the, the UK Parliament, not so long ago, had an issue put to the House about impeaching Prime Minister Blair, former Prime Minister Blair, mm -hmm. and uh, that was approved by the Speaker to go to the parliamentary vote. Right. Uh, that's precedent. But that's impeachment in the House itself. Mm. See, we, we have not had that sort of... Uh, Do we have a procedure of that at all? Um, I think it would be more honest to say that I think there's a, there is an historic uh, um, example that goes back in, in the 1800s. Right. Um, but I, not in recent times. Of course, in recent times, it has been enough, and which really goes to the core, the quality of our democracy or our view of what a fair go is, that in New Zealand, if you get caught misleading the House knowingly as a minister, uh, then you step down. Yes. And there's, and, and there's been numerous examples of ministers doing that. But now it's a prime minister. Now it goes to the longevity of this government, the survival of this government. And that's why there's a huge number in the establishment, including, dare I say, and I'm not, it's not a criticism, but the media accepting, well, because the Prime Minister, he can't do that. 
Well, that actually is not transparent. It's not accountable. It's not about democracy. And the Prime Minister it will get caught time and time again now because there are just too many people who knew that he knew. Well, also, as a general principle, the rule of law does apply to the Prime Minister as much as it does to the rest of us. It's just, it's just in this particular circumstances, it seems to be difficult to actually apply it. Um, would, would perhaps some, I mean, there's, there's a special group of people who are privy to, to the activities of the GCSB, and they are Prime Ministers and Deputy Prime Ministers, and they are the only, only ones that, are, that deal with the GCSB, as far as I know. There is a parliamentary committee where one is aggressive enough, you can get to the essence of the matter. Uh, that will include the Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, they're the opposition, one of the opposition person, and perhaps another party, uh, another party leader. Yeah. Uh, but that committee has barely met as well. So you can see what's going wrong here. Would it be possible, do you think, to, to convene some kind of inquiry which had a judge and perhaps some former Prime Ministers? To consider this matter because I think, I mean, in the interest of national security, it is difficult for this. It's, well, it's impossible for this inquiry to be held in open, and yet it does need to. Um, some sort of inquiry needs needs to take place to reassure people about the administration of the security services. Because quite apart from the fact that we've got this Kim.com affair, we also know now though, that we've had five different directors of the GCSB over a short space of time, and um, on top of that, we had a um, Stephen Wilkie. Inquiry at the end of 2010, which found that um, he was the head of the Defence Technology Agency, who um, who was a fraud, and um, and that inquiry singularly failed to get to the bottom of those issues yes. as well. You know why that was, would you? No. Well, it goes to the court who appointed him, who was involved in the panel at the bottom in the first place. Which was? Well, it's the people that were responsible are still there, aren't they? Right. They're never going to inquire to themselves. I mean, I don't rule out the prime ministerial group, though I've been very concerned about uh, the fact that it would be weighed, that they would certainly weighed up in, in favour of national, because they can choose it. And uh, with great respect to, for example, Jenny Shipley and Jim Bolger, given my knowledge of them, I do not think they were capable of looking you know, into the depth of this matter. And I say, why? If it be BNZ and the wine box and everything else, Mr. Mott would be able to get something as complex as this. Right. That's why we say, I'd rather have a judge in whom I could trust, even a foreign judge. Totally neutral, in which the public could have trust, and with terms of reference, that the public can believe is appropriate to get to the truth here. The serious thing is, they've turned our, secu our um, security services, our agencies such as the SIS and the GCSB, into a national joke. That's what I would, as a foreign minister, I'd know that's how they'd look over internationally at us, because this is a circus. Well, it, it has occurred to me that, um, that maybe the international security agencies decided that this matter needed to be shut down, and hence we got the announcement from the Prime Minister on the 17th of September. That prior, to, I mean, at that point, that seemed to come out of the blue, and and John Key seemed to be somewhat reluctant to make the announcement that he did, although he then claimed that he was being very, very transparent about it. But in reality, two days earlier. The, the, the defence powers that met in Wellington and presumably considered this matter and presumably decided that this was well, this was the course of action that should be taken. All right, my question is, uh, given his responsibility, was he proactive or being reactive? And the answer is, I'm certain the second. He was being reactive to what he had to do to try and shut the story down. But I know other Prime Ministers, and I almost point to them all, if they'd have heard a whiff of this, They'd have been filming downtown to find out what the hell was going on. Well, that that is that does seem to come to the heart of the matter, which is given that that Kim Dot Com was giving him a headache from from know, February onwards, mm. and he was in fact answering questions both in the house and um, to the press gallery about Kim Dot Com on a fairly constant basis during this period. He simul he simultaneously was not being briefed on that by Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet and his and the GCSB, who. By that stage, we were well aware that there was a question about the legality of, of, of the operations. Yeah, but it goes back. Well, the legality is one, one, one matter. Yeah. Uh, by the, and, uh, while it's important, it's not the central matter here. The central matter here, the key matter is, what did the Prime Minister know that he's not admitted? That's the number one issue now. That's where it's moved to. And that goes to the core of our constitutional problem. The other issues are important. Illegal spying on citizens. Uh, Legal communication of information that should not have happened, 
That's all very important. But right now, we should not be deterred from the number one issue is the transparency of the democratic system we have and the Prime Minister's role in it. Now, uh, that being the case, it is clear the Prime Minister knew a long time before he's admitted. He's just given the head of his department a knighthood for being conscientious, um, efficient, uh, someone who has been a, a, a top-class civil servant. None of that suggests that he was not doing his job. No. Well, thank you. I, I suspect this matter is going to go on, and um, I might come back to talk to you about it again. I'm um, certain we'll be having another one to talk about it, because there's more to come. Thank you.